Why is Melbourne known to have Australia's best food scene? On this episode of the God Given Talent Podcast, I travelled to the city to interview three prominent figures within this highly raved about food scene. Yeah. Oh, thanks man, appreciate it. <laughs> Ask them that very question. Melbourne's food scene is saturated. It's now well over a month since my trip, and from my experiences, I've come away with three key points. Keep in mind, these are formulated through comparison to my local scene, the Gold Coast and Queensland in general. We're at South Melbourne Market, Agathe Patisserie. Is it Agathe? Agathe? How would you say? Agatha? Agatha? Yeah, it's probably Agathe. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a chocolate one? Yeah. Chocolate croissant? Cheers. Cheers. I can't eat all the time. Mm. <laughs> How do you balance it? It's hard, like, I have my days where I'll, I'll shoot like, I don't know, max five spots if I can. If it's a sandwich, I'm not eating the whole thing, I'll have half. I'll take the other half home, yeah. someone else will have it, and I'll have it later. Burgers, sort of, it's, it's hard because this is one thing, you sort of, yeah. If it's really good, I'll eat the whole thing, you know, I, I won't lie. <laughs> I'm surprised you managed to do five. I struggle with three. Three, yeah, it depends what you're eating, it depends, yeah. yeah. If you're eating like little snacks like this, if it's something small like croissant, then obviously I'll do that in the morning. Yeah. And then you can do another two small things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that was That's what was good about New York, like, because you could just go and get a slice of pizza. I, I, you could do six slices in a day. Yeah, it's like, okay, well. And then that, it's like a whole pizza, you know, it's, it's, it's all right, but. Yeah. Yeah, when you're getting full meals, it's, yeah, it's tough. I need to bring someone with me now. Yeah, yeah. places, because they'll, not the whole menu, but. A few dishes from. Oh, if you go in a restaurant, you got to bring someone. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. And man, it's tough. Yeah. And imagine trying to do three of those in a day. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and yeah. I guess that goes back to my point about how everything just feels like an everything store up there. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't just have snacky places. Yeah, it's all. So meals. if I do a video, it's like yeah. it's all these meals. Mm. Like I like going to a place, and I think that's why in Melbourne we can sort of do it a bit more easier because. Mm. There's so many places that specialize. You can go there and just grab one thing, you know, whereas for you guys, they're probably like, you need to try this, you need to try that, you need to try this, you know? What's the go with donuts in Melbourne? There's so many donuts. There places. is a lot. Donuts. This is what I found, like when I've gone around to other cities in Australia, like Perth, didn't have a dedicated donut shop. Mm. I feel like maybe Gold Coast had one, I'm not sure. It's your Krispy Kreme, it's your franchises. Yeah, that's what I found everywhere else. But in Melbourne, we've got like, yeah, brands. Mm. Like we've got different places that are making donuts, like your bakeries. I feel like there's two types. There's like your bakery donut, which is like the, usually the filled custard or Nutella. And then you've got the donut shops to do the ring, you know, the classic rings. Um, and then we've got Donut King, we've got Walkers as well. Hectors has donuts. Yeah, yeah, they do donuts too, yeah. It's just, it's just a thing where all the savory places will also have like a sweet that they serve as well. Yeah. And the Hectors, they have like their own in-house chef doing it as well. The, which the is cool. Yeah, it's cool. But their cabinet wasn't like donuts and other things. It mm. was just, it's just donuts. donuts. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything groundbreaking that separates us from any other sandwich shop in Melbourne. But I think what we do is just try and execute perfectly. It's incredibly simplistic. Like if we make donuts, we want them to be the best donuts. And if we make coffee, we want them to be, make, be the best coffee. And if we make sandwiches, there's no point in us doing this unless we, we really believe that these are the best sandwiches and this is the best product. Taking a look at a lot of menus here on the coast, I find them to be quite broad. Everything from eggs on toast to one or two sandwiches. If you don't like that, choose your side bowl. And you can't skip past the cabinet full of banana bread, croissants and other random treats. They're an everything store. And unfortunately, locals here expect that. Side note, Leaning into everything opens you up to the temptation of adding that next file item that doesn't fit the overall theme of your menu. What makes a venue an institution and what gives Melbourne that title of Australia's best food scene is niche versus everything. The simplicity of it is what inspires me. And I think this anti-concept is what I really like to hold on to. I really don't want us to be a fad. I don't want this to be a flash in the pan. I want to pay respect to the fact that sandwiches are forever food. They've been around forever and they will be around forever. I don't want us to be over conceptualized. I don't want to have too much of a shtick, you know? It's really about being an amenity to, to our surrounding neighborhoods and being here and, and yeah. So what's the inspiration? 
any business that I see that is really kind of authentically connected to what they're doing and loving it, that's inspiration for me. You know, I think people come in a lot and go like, ah, American Diner or whatever. But, you know, if you want to pin it to something, during the 50s and 60s, a lot of Italian and Greek immigrants came to Australia and started up little delis and then they actually sold sandwiches, corner sandwich shops. And I went to those places growing up. It was like ham and mayonnaise and alfalfa on white bread kind of a thing. And so I think sandwiches are a big part of our culture in Australia. And I definitely lean more to that when I'm thinking about who we are and the friendliness of what we do. But I guess, yeah, I mean, it's undeniable that America is kind of the, the sandwich, yeah. holy grail, <laughs> whatever. Um, so, yeah, there's no, there's no zoned in inspiration. Like, yeah. I saw that and I loved it and I repeat. Yeah. And again, I think that's part of our success. Like, it's all coming from somewhere original, even though the concept is not original at all. Well, my understanding of just Melbourne food culture in general, correct me if I'm wrong, is like, it's just, we're a bakery, we just do, and we only do these select Specialized. Pastries. Yeah, specialized. And we're a sandwich shop, we only do sandwiches. Usually you go to a certain place here for a certain thing. Yeah. So if you feel like, like a chicken, like chicken sandwich, the Hex is probably your way to go. Yeah. You know, if you feel like a burger, then obviously you've got college dropout, mm. easy, a few others. There's a lot of specialized places. Ivanhoe Burger Joint will give away freebies to celebrate the end of a legal stoush with rapper Kanye West. The federal court dismissed the case against college dropout burgers after the musician stopped returning calls. It kind of frustrates me to the highest degree knowing that people were expecting me to exploit the situation, right? And there were some ways where I obviously played it to my advantage right, to get the business out there and, and do, you know, certain interviews that I, I wasn't forced to do, that I agreed to do. But so many people around me were like, you have to open up another store, you, you need to build off this brand, you gotta do this, you gotta explore it. And I was just like, F that. I'm too creative, I'm too great to go and take the easy way out. Yeah, wow. Well. So if you notice the time frame of when that originally happened and where I am right now, saying I'm the most influential person in Melbourne, mm. I waited patiently for that all to die down, purposely. I purposely waited for the, all the hype about the Kanye sue me and all the things going on in the world. I let it, I let it die because I wanted to reinvent myself and reintroduce myself as Mark Al Khoury, not the guy that got sued by Kanye West. This is a more interesting observation, which will probably go over the heads of many people who don't pay as much attention to the hospital space as I do. Personalities over concept. Melbourne's food institutions aren't venues that have been passed around by various owners, solely relying on the concept to make the brand successful. To all my Queensland friends, because I can only comment on this area, if you've ever been to a cafe or restaurant that isn't as good compared to when they first open. More often than not, it's because it's under new ownership. Kanye is not what made college dropout great. It's Mark that did that. And Hector's Deli won't ever be the same if Dom was to leave. To the credit of both these fellas, it's not business for them. It's art. You know, how do you go with all the extra publicity when people talk about Hectors through TikTok and or Instagram or TV shows? Um, I love it. Yeah, it's epic. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so um, it's so humbling that people have really kind of connected with what we do. I mean, I always think, oh my god, I'm definitely going to get smashed for this because it's so self-serving. But you know, I always think about Rick Rubin talking about building something because you love the art and you love the, the connection to what you're doing and it's for you and in turn that makes it great for everybody else rather than focusing on you know like oh we're going to be cool and apply ourselves to these people or we're going to grow and we're going to be the biggest business over here or whatever you know I think the reason that people have kind of aligned themselves with what we're doing is because we really do that like the purpose that we're here is because we love coming in every day and doing what we do. And, and we're really open as well with anyone who works here. We're like, if, you, if, if at any point it's not, if you're not digging it, yeah. talk to us, you know, because we'll be a platform for you to go somewhere else or whatever. Um, and so I think the vulnerability and the sort of authenticity behind that 
makes it really easy for people to connect with us because we're definitely imperfect yeah. um, and we're real about who we are and we're, and we're a young, enthusiastic team too. You know, we're, just, we're trying, to, trying to do it, yeah. trying to do our thing. Where I'm kind of different and I see things differently is I see things from an artistic point of view. You know, people that are artists or creatives are always passionate. I mean, they're always passionate, sorry. And, and the passion for, um, you know, developing a product or drawing a picture or painting a painting or writing like a poem comes from a different side where you, you're just trying to communicate your, your emotion and hopefully that connects to someone. Throughout my whole process of being involved in the food game, has always been how can I connect to the audience? It's never about how much money can I make this week or how many burgers can you sell out this week or how many people line up at the shop or whatever it may be. The beginning, and I feel like this is why I'm where I am, is because the focus has always been on creating art. And I, I, I do believe that food is modern day art. Each burger that I kind of developed identifies with the Kanye song. And it wasn't like an obvious choice of what it was. I mean, like I just explained to you earlier what the Graduation Burger is about. It's not about just because that's the name of one of his albums and I was like, oh yeah, that's a great word for a college dropout brand to put a graduation. It's, it's there because it's a cheeseburger. It was designed to be like, if you can't create the most simplest form of a burger as a cheeseburger, then you don't graduate to be a burger shop. So that's my kind of like way to kind of put it out there and say we've, we've graduated this is the graduation burger if, if you're not sure about what to order when you walk, when you walk into a college dropout start with the graduation burger because it's as simple as it gets you know it's always about the experience as someone from the gold coast people come back from melbourne and they always talk about Hector's Deli. It's like, you have to try Hector's Deli, you have to try Hector's Deli. And I just think, how the heck has one sandwich shop in all of Melbourne made that much of an impact that tourists come back and say, you gotta try Hector's Deli? I don't, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what that magic is. I know that there's something in the simplicity. I think in general, what we see with more fast, casual style places is quick service restaurants that equate to greasy burger shops and whatever. And uh, what we did was created a bit of a blueprint for a, a new style of simple but really thoughtful restaurant. Yeah, yeah so it's like, um, I guess it's just really impactful because we don't do much, everything's super simple, but we, we do everything with, with complete consideration. We, we don't make moves, we make them very slowly. You know, brands that have opened up after us have double, triple the amount of stores that we do and we're, we're just not worried about what anyone else is doing, um, but really grateful for the fact that maybe we've helped create something. Yeah. Melbourne's food scene is saturated. It's saturated to the, to the point and people are gonna get fucking mad at me saying this, but it's so saturated that I stand out. I'm different. There's no other burger shop on a Wednesday night with the amount of people that are coming through these doors because of... I'm shocked that how many people have come through. I mean, look, I, I, I do claim I'm the most influential person yeah. in Melbourne. And it's not me just, you know, just talking my shit and just being like, he's just saying these things. I've never been so confident to believe that in myself. I don't give a fuck about what people's gonna say. Yeah. I believe that. That's great. Because of what I see in the Melbourne's food scene and everyone's just trying to copy each other and jumping onto different trends and doing all this is like my whole thing is I, I don't jump on trends I kind of create different experiences and I love the the fact that people can talk and be like his identity is not his own or his, his identity is Kanye's or whatever it is but guess what I'm still here, yeah. and um, no one's copied me yet. In regards to, I mean, people have, I guess. But yeah. So that's probably more of a copy of, as opposed to being an artist. But I mean, look, I, 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 I definitely think Melbourne's scene as well 
is, I want to say overrated, but I think when something is kind of praised so much, the expectations are so high. So when you do come here, it's a little bit underwhelming. So you're like, oh, who looks like, I mean, we, me, me and my wife, we went to, went to America um, last year and the first time we've both been to New York and been wanting to go to New York since I was a kid and see everything. And I got there and it was a little bit underwhelming. I was just like, is this really what all the fuss was about? Like, yeah, it's cool. You see, you know, all these different things. You experience New York as a whole, but I guess the build-up of what the expectations were kind of fell short. Yeah. And that's one problem that I've got of being so influential is that the build-up of being or well, coming to College Dropper is so high that some people are left uh, are underwhelmed. Yeah, wow. And that's something that I'll just have to accept and just be like, well, I'm sorry that I'm so influential mm. to make you feel that way. <laughs> As one friend jokes with me often, Queensland is five years too late when it comes to jumping on trends in the food space. Now, let me explain. I was in Melbourne during the height of TikTok's Raising Cane's trend. This is like the best fried chicken I've ever had. And I'm shocked that not a single burger or fried chicken joint up here decided to play that to their advantage. Now, I do recommend being selective on which trends you do choose to follow, prioritizing creating a great product over chasing the hype. Your great product has the possibility of becoming the next trend that others follow. Now, the third reason why Melbourne's food scene is so highly rated is because of trends and eventual copycats. If you saw a place and it didn't have a line, is that a sign that it's not good? Well, no, not really, not necessarily. Like, it's hard. Like, a lot of people, I think that culture is ingrained in us now, though, where if there's not a line, that everyone just dismisses it and says, nah, it's not good. Yeah. But, you know, that, that could be a hidden gem, you know, that yeah. just hasn't gone viral as such. Yeah. Cause most of the food places now you find are on your TikTok. Yeah. yeah. So you're a creator yeah. that features a lot of these places. Have you ever felt that you've been one to create these lines? Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm directly doing it, but there, there is places where I'll go, the video will do well. I'll get a message from the place. Even six months down the line, I'll still have people coming yeah. saying they come here for me. Like they, they saw it on my yeah. page. And a lot of places will say like, thank you so much. And I'm like, you don't owe me any thank you. Like yeah. you gave me the food. Like, you know, I pay for the food, but like you gave us the gift of that food, you know? Yeah. So it's like me sharing that is just me sharing good food. Yeah. Otherwise I wouldn't share it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then it's good to see that these these genuine people that are making good food are getting that recognition, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks man, appreciate it. <laughs> Great example on camera. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> See you, you go. <laughs> When we talk about competition, like we, we love everyone else who's yeah. doing sandwiches. Where we know a lot of the owners as well, and it's amazing. I think when you commit to opening up a shop that serves sandwiches <laughs> and then don't expect anybody else to do it, you're probably a little bit lost. You know, it's like opening a pizza shop or a kebab shop or fish and chips. Like they've been around forever. It's not, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just trying to do what we do really well. That's it. The initial reason why I created College, Drop, College Dropout was more so because I was paying homage to Kanye. I wanted people to recognize his, his songs, his lyrics that changed my life. And I'm, I'm so confident in my creative kind of aspect of where, where I am right now, where I can create a brand about anything. If I mention a handful of brands that are popular in Melbourne, you see my influence in all of them. Because I've literally been there giving advice to people because I'm that guy. Yeah. I've come to the realization that I'm sick and tired of like, people not appreciating what I've done. I mean, this isn't just a burger shop that's got two pack of Biggie on the wall. Mm. This isn't just a, a pizza shop that's, that's called, named after a Godfather or some mafia movie yeah. that has that connotation. Well, look, that's not creative. 